have a very nice evening. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Ahmed. Um, I think this is the perfect time for us to talk about our next studio very guest. Much so. Because for a lot of families, not across London, but across the UK, they're going to be preparing for Eid. And a big part of the Eid celebrations is, of course, uh, thinking and talking about food. Now, Sunny and I were very delighted to be invited along to the Great Indian Food Fe- uh, Feast. Um, and if you like a chicken korma, this was not for you because this was more of the traditional food that we like. Um, Britain spends nearly £3.5 billion pounds on Indian food every year. So why not save some money and, and make it at home? Well, we're delighted to say that we have in the studio Urban, the Urban Raja, who is a cook and food author and is a champion of making Indian food accessible for everyone. Welcome to BBC Welcome. London oh, 4.9. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Now, I'm, are you happy for us to call you Ivor? That's your name, but you are the Urban Raja. Whatever makes you feel I'm comfortable. I'm going to stick with Urban Raja. <laughs> the because, Urban you know, Raja. Because I would like to know him as that because I because he very much entertained us in Shoreditch yes. the other night, yeah. right? So we went to Shoreditch as at yeah. your invite uh, to experience a night of food and pleasure to a certain degree. But when we walked in, Shay, mm. from the time we walked in, it was just theatre. That's Thank what it you. was. That's what it was. We had the master of ceremonies who came in like yourself. It was you. <laughs> what am I saying? Like yourself. It was you who came and introduced every dish and told us what's happening on the plate, which is yeah. not always happening when you go out for dinner. You just choose something, you went eat it, and then you leave it to yourself. I, th- I mean, for me, you know, the whole thing about, about the pop-up and my approach to Indian food is that, you know, I grew up, like you guys, with just fantastic food, you know, sublime food. So the whole aim for the Great Indian Food Feast is maybe to take people's spice buds beyond their existing horizon you know mm. just to try something a little bit different now here's the thing now i am uh i am indian i am from my no sorry i'm indian but i'm british and i'm more of a londoner than anything else so i'm i've tasted many cuisines in my life mm. and what i tasted that night i didn't recognize some of it and really that's me saying that right now and oh, that's, because, that's quite a clue well and, done and, 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 yeah, and thank that's you. you know someone who thinks that yeah my mom cooks so hard i need to go to a new <laughs> Uh, I very much eat Punjabi Indian food. Yeah, okay, yeah. so that is my, you know, sarg, uh, that's um, spinach, spinach and what have you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the curry that is not made the way that they put all that, you know, colouring in it to make yeah. it all orangey. I don't have that. Mine yeah. it was always looking brown. When I came to uh, to the main dish, you had on the plate from different parts of India these dishes that I probably never would have tried. Tell us the names of the dishes. Thing. Yeah, so uh, the whole sort of philosophy was really to um, to travel all around the Indian subcontinent. So we started off in the Himalayas, yes, and we had um, the Lassi. Uh, the, well, we started off actually. You're totally right. We started. I remember off the with night, you know, the amuse bush. <laughs> it was a hard night for me. <laughs> it was long. It was hard work. You know Hold in on, the kitchens, man. Hold on a minute. I want to go through the whole menu properly because my Shay, Shay's asked you for the menu. What I'm going to do is I'll go to the travel yes. okay. to let everyone know what's happening on the roads and we're going to come back with the Urban Raja cool. and what the evening entailed for our taste buds. BBC London 94.9. Here's the latest travel news and the M25 is still very slow clockwise from Junction 7. The M23 turned to Junction 9 at Leatherhead after an accident. It's also slow anti-clockwise between 10 at Wisley and 8 at Rygate and also between 13 and 11 after a separate problem. With the M3, this has just come in. It's very slow. Rather, the M23 is very slow northbound at the M25 Junction 7, largely due to the M25 problems, but I've not heard of any incidents because of that. But if you are aware, do give us a ring 020 7224 2000 or tweet us at BBC Travelette. Still very slow for the A102 on my camera, northbound from Shooters Hill at the Sun and the Sands all the way to the Blackwall Tunnel. That's because of a breakdown which happened much earlier on today. The M1 northbound at Junction 2 at Five Rose Corner has one lane closed and the entry slip road partly blocked because of an accident. Lewisham, it's looking very slow on the A20 on Lewisham Way at Wickham Road as the lights are not working there after an accident. And in Chesington, Gilders Road is closed. At more lane because of a house fire so bus route 71 is on diversion with the trains possible disruption still for east midland trains because of industrial action there's also engineering work which means that southern trains are not running to and from london bridge today first capital connect also not stopping at london bridge and are suspended via mitcham junction there's also no london overground between wilson junction and camden road and on the tube there's engineering work effect in the victoria metropolitan and piccadilly lines fiona mckinnon bbc london 94.9 except in 15 minutes
Welcome back to BBC London 94.9. You are here with Sunny and Shay. In the studio with us is one of our favourite topics, which is food. Mm. Me and Shay agree, disagree on a lot of things, but we definitely agree about food. And we were invited to a shortage in a pop-up restaurant that was only open for 48 hours. And it took you on a journey across India and the vast varieties of food that was available for you to experience. Now, as a curry eater myself, Urban Raja, yeah. that's what he's called, Urban Raja. So I not only was eating food, but you were there coming into each course and giving us what we're eating, but also teaching me a bit of history of what I'm eating. Yeah. So effectively, I was eating history. Mm. That's That was the whole aim. So, so right. the whole aim for the pop-up and actually everything that... I do with Indian food is all about, you know, the provenance of where the foods come from, the stories, because, you know, when it comes to food, I think food always tastes better when there's a story behind it. Definitely. Which was the the kind of the whole motivation behind the book, the Urban Ranchers Curry Memoirs, which I know we'll, we'll chat a little bit about later on. But, you know, one of the dishes that we had on the menu, um, I mean, it's one of my favourite, actually, it's a shami kebab. Uh, and I call it the smoothest kebab on the planet because the history behind it is that there was a Nawabi prince and he was so large that he needed a platform uh, to be built so that it actually could get onto his horse. That's how big he was. I mean, he, this guy had such an opulent lifestyle wow. that he lost all of his teeth. Oh, dear. <laughs> Which is not good for... Right. <laughs> for not if you like curry. food. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> especially dentures weren't invented then, <laughs> right? So what, so what he did was he got one of his chefs, um, and a lot of the chefs back then were from Persia. And he said, well, look, make me a kebab that I don't have to chew. So he invented this kebab, which was ground lamb mince, you know, you know, packed full of whole spices, cardamom, cloves and um, chilies and all sorts and black peppercorns. And he made it into the smoothest kebab known to mankind. Wow. It's known as the Shami kebab. So, I mean, look, you guys tasted it on the mm, night. So. Yeah, yeah. See, this is, that's something me and Shay sort of like, uh, because Shay's a vegetarian, mm. right? So I very much had it the way you planned it and you yeah. gave Shay a different kind of dish to yeah. what it I was, was eating. It was stunning. I had traditional paneer, which I love. Um, and the, I have to say, for me, the starter was amazing. Anyone who listens to BBC London 94.9 will know that I love Indian starters. So I love things like samosas um, and you know, dickies. But what was great for you is you had uh, basically a roti yeah. and then you had um, shole, which is chickpeas with yeah. a beautiful kind of coriander and mint chutney on top. It was, it was right. stunning. But you very kindly have brought in some food for us yes. today because I am very yeah. keen to talk to you about your new book. The, the, the beauty of what you do, The Urban Raja, is you have actually released a book, The Curry Memoirs, which is all about people being able to experience the food that we're talking about yeah. at home so you yeah. can cook it at home. Um, but the, what you've brought in is one of my favourites, pakoras. Yeah. Now, tell us about these pakoras. They're, they're known as onion bodges, but they're not onion bodges, are onion they? Barges. They're better. Yeah, I mean, pakoras, for me, you know, pakoras are... OK, to translate that, we would... Uh, what we have is is potato and onion pakoras. Right. Um, so you've got potatoes, you've got onions, you I'm going to take chilies. a bite of this as you say, as you say this, yeah. Well, tell me what you think mm. while, while, whilst I'm talking. Mm. And what you've got there is you've got all of that in a very light batter. So you might call them like Indian tempura snacks. Oh, okay, right. You know, something like along fritters, the, uh, almost, yeah. Yeah. Uh, almost like fritters. But, you know, the the main thing is you want to keep them light. Right. So I'm they just going to say, they're beautiful and they're really crispy. Um, and you've, you've given some lovely imni chutney, so that's tamarind chutney. Yeah. But what I like, Sunny, um, is they're not very deep. They're not drenching in fat, in, you know, because they're deep fried, aren't they? They are deep fried. But, but the thing is, is you don't leave them in the fat for too long. You don't leave them you know, just boiling away in them. So as soon as they start to turn this caramelised kind of toffee colour, and it's the simplest thing to make. It's in the book. And and the reason I brought it in is, you know, as soon as they turn that sort of toffee colour, whip them out, put them on some These kitchen so towel. I, Ivor, you've, I'm, I'm sold, honestly. <laughs> I love so, it. I love it. It's so beautiful. The, the restaurant I'll was, talk, uh, you guys yeah, in. I have posted <laughs> we a picture up, by the way, on Twitter, at Sunny and Shay, so you can have a look at these beautiful pakoras that Ivor's brought in. And here's the thing, that... The, it was only open for 48 hours. It was yeah. very much experimental, wasn't it, to see yeah. people, if there was an audience for this kind of food. Yeah. Because it, I didn't see the traditional stuff that you would probably hear, see in a in an ordinary curry house, yeah. probably in Brick Lane. Um, you could argue that, you know, the food in Brick Lane isn't traditional Indian food. It's yeah. very much 
you know, masala based and there's the yeah. same masala that goes into mostly all the That's other things. Right. But at the same time, they have a beautiful flavour, hence why people keep going back. Absolutely. So... It's British curry, you know. There actually, you go. That's yeah. what it is. And so tell us about the Urban Raja memoirs. Is, yeah. is, is it written from your experiences of what... Because Urban Raja, you're the Urban Raja, right? Yeah, so, so I'm the Urban Raja. And, you know, for me, I actually started to find out more... I, I've always cooked, always been eating, um, and wow. <laughs> always been we're, eating. We're digging in whilst you're talking. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Urban Raja, your food is so beautiful. If anyone hasn't you're tried this, his food... Derek, come in for a minute. Derek, come you're in Derek, here yeah? now. Here's and try food. Okay, before you talk about the curry memoirs i have a key question for you because on, right there. a lot of people are going to love your name i think it's accessible have a seat, derek. Oh. Yeah. and derek can tell us as well what, right. like. what does urban raja mean can you tell us that first okay, right so raja is like nobility raja a raja is a king is a ruler and and what have you i've spent most of my life in urban environments right when i spent a lot of time traveling around india uh, and, and and actually, we support some projects out in Chennai, and we support some healthcare and education projects in the slums. Mm. And I just had this whole notion about um, actually, we could live a noble life every day. So everything we do around Urban Raja, a percentage of whatever we make out mm. of food festivals, wow. pop up restaurants, supper clubs, books, we help fund some of these projects um, in India. So this is about urban Raja living a noble life every day mm-hmm. and making a difference. And you can do it through food. You, know? you just have, because look at, Derek's look at Derek's face. face. Derek, tell Derek, us tell what us. Are you experiencing. Because you've eaten our food and we bought in... Uh, I think we're going to start making them like this now. Yeah. So. I'm telling you, he's absolutely spot on of the recipe. I'm telling you, mate. You like literally, that? it's dry. What mm. Shay was saying. Yeah. I literally second what Shay was just saying. It's not oily. And, you know, I refuse to eat a lot of oil or foods with a lot of oil. Yeah. But this literally feels nice in my mouth. It yeah. Does it feel like greasy. clean it Yeah, It feels clean, exactly oh, what you said, because I'm a health freak. Because so it, it hasn't really got that, clean. you know when you have something like chips, for example, yeah, and it has that little greasy, layer oily. at the back when you finish swallowing it. You can almost feel it in your stomach when it goes down. You're like, oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. the oil in it. It's you know? heavy. But literally, yeah, that feels so dry. It's like, it, not dry as in it uncomfortable, but yeah. dry as in it's clean. You just said mm. it. Oh, that's that fantastic. That was the right word. And it's spicy as well. Thank you for the kick. You have to take this with you. Take it with you. Because you're going to keep eating. We've got a show to do. Take this. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And, 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 and our lovely Derek and Celestine Thank will enjoy you. that. Thanks for that, Derek. So, so you've got, you got one guy happy in the studio. So tell, well, us all more, of us. T- tell us more about... No, I'm already happy. I was just mm. talking about it. Right. So t- tell us more about the book itself. Uh, what kind of recipes have you touched on? Is it is it very much an introduction to your kind of cooking? And you've got another one coming up. Have you already sort of planning it? Yeah, so, so the starting point for the book was... Um, so my dad and his three brothers, they're fantastic cooks. You know, So I remember growing up, going to my Uncle Abu's house um, in West London. And, you know, we'd have family parties and I'd be a kid, little kid, with hair that looked like carpet. You couldn't do anything <laughs> with it. There's do you know what I mean? There's a lovely picture in the book, actually. It's a beautiful <laughs> yeah. picture in the book. I love it. So I couldn't do anything with the hair back then. And now, a few decades on, I still can't. Yeah, you've got no hair left. Because I haven't got any hair left. Yeah. So all the tide's gone out. Um, and so we'd be sitting in the living room and we'd smell these amazing smells that would come out. Kebabs would come out. Samosa would come out. There would be aloo tiki, little potato cutlets that would come out. But the thing that I absolutely loved were these pakoras. Yes. And I used to, you know, being a a small kid, you know, the table was a little bit higher than I was. And all I could see was like pakora mountain. This thing, (laughs) like the table would be wobbling under the weight of pakoras. Somehow, though, we always ate our way through the pakoras. There wasn't a crumb left. Wow. So I, I actually started to discover a lot about our family history because most of it isn't written down. It's orally passed down, you know. And my dad and, and, and his three brothers, they're all knocking on a bit now. I call them the silver foxes. Nice. And the only way that I could actually unlock a lot about our family history was through our food. Oh, OK. So I'd find out a lot about where they came from, where they grew up, where they went to school by actually talking to them. So this is what's in the food. the curry memoirs right now. It's not yeah. only recipes, but it's also a journey of a family, how they stayed together and played together and, yeah. you know, very much spend time together. And food is the key thing that keeps most people together, right? That's yeah. how we break down barriers through food. That's right. And, you know, I think, well, look, you know, 
you go to any Asian household and it's an unwritten rule. You cross that threshold, <laughs> you will be, be fed. fed. Exactly. <laughs> you can't leave. And we're not going to apologise about that <laughs> yeah, either. I'm not, not going That's to apologise. Right. Yeah. You know, I think it's what's beautiful is what you've just described about the mountain of pakoras is going to be happening across many households in the UK as many people will be celebrating Eid, Eid uh-huh. possibly tomorrow yeah. or on Tuesday once they find out tonight at nine o'clock. Yeah. Um, but, but just briefly then, tell me one of your recipes you would recommend to somebody who isn't familiar with it, with curry. Just... Yeah, not familiar with Indian food. They know they like it and yeah. they'll have, you know, they'll have something and think that's great. But to actually want to make it at home, yeah. you know, tell me, tell me perhaps a recipe in your book that would help them, which would be good for them. I, I would say one of the, well, there's two easy, simple dishes to make. Mm. And I would start off with some snacks. So, um, and curry is very forgiving, actually. You know, the thing is, is if you mess it up a little bit, a little bit of extra spice here or there, you just, you'll you can, work you it out. You can recover it. You can recover it. But I would start off with the pakoras that you're eating tonight. Brilliant. Because it's so simple and it's so quick and it's cheap. It's cheap. Um, so it, it really quick and simple to make. It will it will take less than 15 minutes He just to finished make. all your pakoras. He didn't even keep it oh, for the man. other girl. Oh, look Derek's at, look. finished the whole Derek, plate. I'm hungry. Yeah. I, I bought <laughs> enough for six people, Derek. <laughs> that mountain just man, went. you've robbed my food for tonight. So um, Pakoras is one. Pakoras is one, and I would the other one would be chapli kebabs. So where can we find the book? So the book uh, you can find Urban Rogers Curry Memoirs either online in Amazon mm-hmm. or you can get it in the high street at Waterstones and as well. Waterstones. And it's ha- a beautiful book. The pictures inside are lovely. You know, for me, I, I really did relate because I looked at it and suddenly don't you feel it? It reminds you of your own childhood in yes. some ways. You know, the family parties, the family get-togethers. Yeah. Um, and in some ways you do kind of, re- you create your own little India yeah. um, at home yeah. with your food. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and looking at some of the pictures but also reading some of your memoirs, yeah. it, it's a very well done book. So congratulations Thank on you. that. Thank you so much. And um, when 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 are you thinking of doing this again now? Maybe a pop up because people it's already done. It's over now, and yeah. so like you had only forty eight hours in that venue. When are you thinking of doing it again? So we're going to go. We're probably going to be back in uh, in Shoreditch, Hoxton oh, okay. um, in in autumn, um, and we're thinking of a theme which is probably a, more along the lines of. Um, it's all the Raj. Okay, so you see so, what I did there. Yeah, 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 all, yeah, the Raj. all the Raj. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You could even have a pie in there somewhere. I am thinking maybe that's how my brain's going right now. If people want to follow you and find out, they don't miss out. How, yeah, how the best way to follow me is either on Twitter at Urban Raja R A J A H mm-hmm. or www.urbanraja.com. Sign up because anybody that signs up will be the first to know Brilliant. where we're popping up. Oh, and I really hope that we get to come along to it because honestly, it was such for a sure. great Indian food feast. It was perfectly named. It was theatre, man. It was. It was, it it was, was theatre for theater. food. And congratulations on the new book. Promise me you'll come back. Bless you. Uh, head of the next pop-up. Of course I, of course I will do. I've got to feed you. Yes, yes you, you must. must. Give you yes. a second round. Let's do yes, this. you must certainly must. Now, if you'd like, one. Yeah, so if you'd like to see a couple of pictures, we've popped them up on Twitter. It's at Sunny and Shay at BBC London 949. And as Ivor said, if you'd like to follow him and his curry memoir, was the book is out now it's at urban raja u-r-b-a-n-r-a-j-a-h and urban so do make sure you sign up thank you so much thank you so urban much raja, oh, the 